Now, there is an estimate by the FCC, which even the FCC says is probably understating the scope of the problem, that approximately 18 million um, people uh, lack internet access where they live. Um, that number is admittedly flawed. Um, for example, uh, if a census block contains even one household that has internet access, under the current methodology, that entire census block is treated as being served, even though we know that it is not, particularly in mountainous uh, portions of, of our country. Um, and so better mapping is going to be necessary so we really know where uh, the problem is. Um, th there is a company called Broadband Now that estimates that the actual number of people without access is more on the order of 42 million. That's a number that's many multiples of, of the FCC's estimate. Um, so how important do you think it is to create precise maps? Uh, and we realize it's gonna take some time to get better mapping in place. Um, should we wait to provide substantial funding until we have the maps and can actually see what the scope of the problem is and target precisely those places that don't have access? Well, it would be good to target that funding precisely so it does the most good, but I, I'm afraid that we can't wait. I mean, schools are already starting in some areas. They'll all be starting within two or three weeks. So uh, we can't wait five years for broadband coverage in the rural areas. We, we need it immediately. Yeah. But mapping is definitely an issue. Um, the Congress passed an act to uh, provide for better mapping, but they have not yet funded it. So we're urging the, that that be funded uh, even in one of the COVID relief packages that are being considered. I noticed um, when the FCC took some preliminary steps to implement the Congressional Act, Chairman Pai noted that the funding to really complete the job is not there and that Congress would have to provide that funding. So hopefully when a stimulus package is assembled, um, I hear there may be some broadband funding and the next one that's coming forward at the present time, assuming agreement can be reached, um, maybe there will be funding in that for that mapping project as well, which is uh, vitally necessary if we're gonna do this job properly. Um, we all know that um, tens of billions of dollars will be necessary in order to fill the accessibility gap in rural areas. Where does the National Grange think that money should come from? Well, that's always the issue, <laughs> is the funding. Um, I believe that it should be a public-private partnership. I mean, we realize that uh, it's not economically practical for the service providers to uh, go to the last mile to serve all these rural areas. We know that it's gonna take government funding to do that, but there should be a way to partner with, with service providers and government funding to, to uh, multiply those funds. Okay. Uh, the funding would derive from the federal government, but be expended through a public-private partnership, hopefully with private sector contributions complementing government funds. Is, does that fairly state your view? Yes. 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 That's... Okay. Um, so uh, to the extent that federal funds are provided, um, should those funds only provide uh, for the connection of areas that do not have service? I'll just note that some have argued that there are below average speeds, uh, below acceptable speeds in many places, even though they might technically qualify for broadband. Um, so what does the National Grange have a position on that? Should it be only for unserved areas or should it be for areas that have service that some might think is less than adequate? I think it should be prioritized to get some level of service out to everyone who does not have any. But then the, the second priority should certainly be to increase the service level for 
those who, who do have some coverage, but not enough to really do business. Yeah, that's, that's a sensible approach. Um, to the extent that federal dollars are made available for rural broadband, uh, do you have any thoughts on how the allocation of those funds should occur? For example, the FCC has a reverse auction process that it has utilized very successfully on a number of previous occasions. Um, through that process, the funds are awarded to the lowest bidder, and some would argue that that sees that more dollars are spent uh, more efficiently. And actually, you get the biggest bang for the buck. You get the most uh, residences served for the dollars expended. So uh, do you have a position or any thoughts about whether that reverse auction process should be utilized for uh, the expenditure of federal dollars? I, I agree with that. It seems that the reverse auction process is working well. Um, I do think that after the auctions this fall, that begin this fall, um, it should be evaluated before the phase two kicks in, to, just to make sure that that is the best way, the most efficient way to uh, get the, the funding and out there and the systems built. 